Well, we've uh, done several studies on um, meta-analysis on long-term effects of of uh, medication on the brain structure and brain chemistry in ADHD. But un unfortunately so far there are no longitudinal imaging studies, so they're all retrospective studies. But what we found in uh, PET studies using positron emission tomography, that after one year of stimulant medication, the dopamine transporters and the basal ganglia seem to go up. Mm -hmm. And that is a bit worrying because it suggests the brain adapts to stimulant medication. And in fact, clinical studies have not shown long-term efficacy of stimulant medication. It works very well short-term, but longer-term it hasn't been demonstrated. And I think this is because of the brain adaptation to the stimulant medication. We don't know really what it means clinically. Unfortunately, we don't know because the study where Chapman and them looked at clinical features. But we know... Um, that in ADHD having too high dopamine transporter levels in the basal ganglia has been associated with inattention. So it may possibly have a, a negative effect on the inattention, but we, we don't really know conclusively. Yes. That needs to be studied. Hmm. What is the effect on the clinical symptoms? Yes. We don't know. From our studies, I can't really... Uh, we, we did not look at long-term effects of stimulant medication. We just looked at the brain level. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can't say much. I mean, I would... From my brain perspective, I would say it's a good idea to have drug holidays because you would prevent the adaptation of the brain to the drug. I would say drug holidays is probably a good idea. Well, we're talking about stimulants in general. It wasn't just methylphenidate, but also some, some were taking dexamphetamine. We found that the dopamine transporter levels seem to be elevated in people who take the stimulants over years. So that's the adaptation in the brain. And they're normally reduced. So people who are naive and have never taken drugs have reduced dopamine transporters. People who are long-term uh, treated, their, their dopamine transporters seem to be elevated, which means they go up with treatment. And, uh, and it was higher than in normal, so that's the worrying. If it was normalized, it would be fine, but they seem to go higher than... So than summer normal. breaks of medication seem a good idea? Yes, yes, I would say so, yeah. So that's, uh, that's a recommendation to a clinician anyway? Yeah, but I mean, this is my guess. I'm, I'm not, uh, you know, nobody has studied... Um, what happens in the summer breaks. So ideally we need studies um, and also you have to be in mind all the PET studies have been done in adults because they cannot be done in children because they require a radioactive substance injections. So in children we don't really know what happens. In adults they are, the brain adapts. What happens in children? We assume the same happens in children but we don't know. And you know ideally we need studies which look at what happens in the summer holidays. Does the brain yeah. you know, change. Yeah. The kind of study would, which would be necessary as is to have imaging data across different centers on large numbers of ADHD patients and then develop this method and apply it to one group and then transfer it to all the other groups of children with ADHD and show that, you know, you can diagnose individual children with ADHD based on this method across different groups of ADHD children, across different centers, different countries, so that it's robust and uh, you have one method to diagnose ADHD children based on the brain scan. Mm. Ideally, the outcome would be that we would have a more objective measure to diagnose ADHD patients or to help with the diagnosis. It will never replace the diagnosis, I don't think so, but it could help if you, for example, have a different, difficult case, you don't know is the ADHD, is the autism. You could use the brain pattern to help you to say, well, according to the brain pattern, it looks more like ADHD or it looks more like autism, and that can help for the individual diagnosis in the future. At the moment, there are a lot of studies also testing other medications, like one for scene, which is a noradrenaline agonist. There are very few studies on atomoxetine on, on, in terms of what it does to the brain. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think there, there will be new... Serotonin has been involved in ADHD as well. So I think um, there will be new drugs coming out. Also GABA, glutamate is important. So we, we're starting to understand, because in the beginning we always thought that dopamine is involved in ADHD, but there's far more transmitters involved in ADHD. The story is far more complex. And my hope is that the, the better drugs can be developed, which may have no side effects, for example. I mean, stimulant does have side effects. Maybe the other drugs... I, I don't think in the next five years, but in the next 15 years, we may see other medications for ADHD, hopefully. And the clinicians will have better tools to work with. 
And the clinicians hopefully will have better tools to work with and hopefully neuroimaging can help a bit for treatment or for diagnosis to aid in the clinics. Yes. Yeah.